it a fixture on the Mountain Hawk sideline. 18th season there, the all-time leader in wins at that school. His message to his team, trust your talent tonight, be aggressive, and be assertive, and we'll be on defense first tonight. How excited is Northwestern to have Ty Berry back. He wears number three. There's Jalen Leach, all-conference last year at Fairfield University. Martinelli in his bag of tricks there near the lane. 0 for 1 to start. And Lehigh stands up with their first defense there. That was good D there by Kendall to lay off. But you do not want to let Martinelli get downhill over that right shoulder. Martinelli got a hand on it. And up ahead, this will be an easy first bucket for Matt Nicholson. You're Dream already start. starting to see the defensive versatility. They are going to extend the pressure a lot more and try to deny those post passes. So Lehigh last season, I mentioned playing their best at the end of the campaign. The top scoring team in the Patriot League. Six of those nine top scorers back here on this team tonight. And the best one, Whitney Sidney, kicks it out to Gillis. Higgins, two years ago, first team all-conference. Second steal for the Wildcats. Here comes Leach. Kicks it out to Barry. That's a good look for the best spot-up shooter in the Wildcat team. Then Kenosman with the ball. Brett Reed telling us this morning, kind of out of his comfort zone tonight. Going to have to play some point forward, play in and play out to make up for the lack of height they have inside. Dan Gillis starting point guard last year as a freshman. Five seconds to shoot. Kenosman up against a seven-footer. And they barely got that one off. And that foul will go against Kenosman. That's what we're going to see from Lehigh in that possession. A lot of off-ball movement. And Lehigh is really good on trying to find their two main guys, Tyler Whitney, Sidney, and Keith Higgins for a lot of down screens, off-ball action. Good job by Northwestern talking all that out, not allowing the advantage. We talked about the departure of Boo Booey, the face of this turnaround here the last four years, especially the last two. Jalen Leach played at Fairfield last year. The other point guard has the ball right now. That's a true freshman, K.J. Windham, who's playing at Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis last year, now filling in for the departed Bowie. Now 0 for 2 from the beyond the stripe of the Wildcats. Back come Tyler Whitney Sidney. They've had a hard time getting off good shots. Barry got a hand on it. That's off of Albion to come back to Northwestern. Good transition defense from Northwestern. Lehigh is going to really try to push the pace. We're first in the Patriot League the last three years at pace. 54th in the country a season ago. We were talking yesterday at practice. It was such a guard-driven squad last year. You said maybe some more points in the paint for Northwestern this year. Yeah, I mean, they relied heavily on the pick-and-roll action for Blue Understandably so, when you have a guy that's so good in ball screen action, so there's going to be a lot more off-ball movement for Northwestern. This is what Martinelli does. Get down in the lane, and that is in his bag. Back to the basket, spinning and scoring. You surprised to see Barry manned up on their best score? Absolutely not. I mean, he's the type of guy that wants to take on that challenge, and I think it'll help him assert himself on the offensive end, stepping up guarding Tyler Whitney Sidney. Shot clock down to seven. Kenosman, good cutting inside, and the defense from the seven-footer. And here comes Leach once again. They'd rather be a little more deliberate than run. They'll take advantage, though, when they can. Martinelli just had two. There's three. That's a great sign for Martinelli. Shot three of 23 from three to end the season last year, knocking down that pick-and-pop jump shot. So Martinelli, you told us at the top of the broadcast, this is going to be the score. He'll be the one without Barnheiser tonight. First, he works it inside. Can also shoot it from the out. Yeah, I mean, he's really elevated his game. And a guy that can score at all facets. He's really improved his catch-and-shoot shooting. Has a lot more fluidity on that jump shot. And obviously, what he does best is that booty ball, getting his back to the basket, using his size, and getting those little shot flippers up. And that time... He went over that left shoulder and got the layup. You'd expect a player to get a lot better from that freshman to sophomore year. He really did that a year ago. Stepped it up, final, started the final 11 games of the year with that injury situation they had with Cy Berry, and we really got a look there in February and March of what could be this year. Yeah, he had a big-time game at Maryland 
game that they needed to win. He had 27 points. And I think that was the start of his belief that he was a clear guard in the Big Ten. If you look at the minutes, the points, the rebounds, and basically tripled his outcome over that freshman to sophomore year. Defense has been terrific so far as the zero would indicate. And there's a block from Nicholson. True freshman from about three hours away here. Hank Alvey has 40 to 50 family and friends in the stands. Had that one go in and out. Back up top to Leach. Terrific fourth year there at Fairfield last year. Top five in their conference scoring and steals. Short there. Whitlock had it taken away. Here comes a true freshman. Window all the way in and two. Lehigh has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Especially with a team at Northwestern that doesn't have a lot of guards. Make them play in the half court. You don't want to have them get out in the transition get easy buckets. Okay, there's their first bucket. Who else? Tyler Whitney Sydney. He'll have a chance to turn it into three. Wildcat defense has been stellar to get rolling. KJ Windham, true freshman, keeps it himself. Wildcats off to a good start. yesterday about life without Boo Booey. First of all, was reflecting. He said he brought a stature to this program, a cool factor, really created a brand. Said he felt indebted to him for all he did to change the perception of this program. Yeah, he is the GOAT of Northwestern basketball, with no doubt. I mean, there's been some great players that have come through here, but his winning, uh, his ability to be one of the premier point guards in the country has put Northwestern on the map, certainly. Taking his place, K.J. Windham. He wears number 24, already has a bucket, back with the ball now. He was an off-guard in high school last year. And now playing point, Nicholson knocks down his second bucket. Pardon me, that's Luke Hunger with his first. Good read there by Windham. They ice the ball screen, which means they send it to the baseline. Luke Hunger there, picking pops, and is able to get the open jumper. Alvey. Second time he's had one go in and out. Lehigh won for their first six field goal attempts. Meanwhile, the Wildcats have made four of their last five. Hunger fresh off his first bucket. Martinelli has a game-high five points. Windham. Almost had the home bounce there. Now, Lehigh would like the chance to run Trey with the advantage they have at the guards, but they just really haven't had the chance yet. Yeah, they've turned the ball over once again. I mean, that's five turnovers in the first five minutes of this game. Not something you want to do playing against a Power 5 team at their home. Well, that's an advantage inside. Martinelli has the height advantage, experience advantage there, and draws the foul. Check it in, Keith Higgins. First team all-conference a couple of seasons ago. Alvy comes out as well. Tommy Conniff comes in for the very first time. Wyndham, Barry missed the final 11 games last year. He's really only been full speed for about a month after the knee surgery at the end of last year. Hunger back inside to Martinelli. They have not figured him out yet. And that's that old school booty basketball. And what makes him so hard to guard is he can shoot it from any angle. It's kind of an awkward hook from his waist and able to knock it in. Mountain Hawks in real danger here, already down by 10. A floater in the lane, another miss. And Wyndham, the freshman, comes down with it. Justin Mullins wears number 20, he's up ahead. Thought he was open, but the ball taken away. And here come the Mountain Hawks. Whitney Sidney, his second bucket, and again he'll have a chance to make it three. Wyndham's had a good start to this game, but two freshman mistakes there. 
in transition. You gotta use a ball fake. And then you see here, getting the inadvertent foul. Maybe that was Mullins, but you don't want live ball turnovers, especially against a guard like Tyler Whitney Sidney, where that's at it, where he's at his best. Talked to Lehigh head coach Dr. Brett Reed this morning. I said success tonight will look like what? And right away he said, well, it starts with shot making. They're only two for eight. Whitney Sidney can't make a three. Also talked about the turnover factor, and already they have five, where Western only has one. Martinelli has been the man so far. Second time down in a row, he draws a foul. And I think if you're guarding Martinelli down there, you almost want to dare him to shoot because that's not what he wants to do on that face-up. He wants you to press in a little bit so that can open up the driving lane for him to get downhill. Justin Mullins hasn't attempted a shot yet. Back out to Martinelli. This time he's on Whitney Sidney. Under almost took a step. Shot clock now down to five. Blake Smith walked on, kicks it out. Just got that off. Oh, not the shot they want, but they'll take it. And Luke Hunger is playing with a ton of confidence coming off an exhibition game where he shot four or five. He's able to get the lucky one there in the right corner. Hunger hasn't missed tonight. More defense from the Wildcats. Wide open three, long. And the defense so far has been textbook for Northwestern. We see here, late clock situation. Blake Smith does a really good job of attacking and trying to find the open shooter. He could have easily taken that up and shot a low percentage floater, but able to find hunger in the corner. Northwestern shooting the ball awfully well, over 50%. They've already made seven out of 12. Leach, hunger, he's feeling it. Have a nice big fella. And that's going to be really hard for Lehigh to guard because now if he's making those pick and pop shots, you're going to have to send another guy to him on the weak side, which is going to open up cuts and a lot of different opportunities for the other four players on the court. And Whitney Sidney's been the only offense they've had, and he's single handedly trying to keep them in it. Meanwhile, on the other end, big number 33, Luke Hunt. We got kind of a glimpse of him at the NCAA tournament last year in those two games. Upped his minutes, averaged 7-7 seven and seven against FAU and UConn. Already has seven points this evening. Martinelli's been unguardable so far. Now they double him up. Hunger gets it right back to him. That is a mismatch. He's going to the line. Luke Hunger has it going early here with the corner pocket three ball. Looking like Joker out there with the pick and pop here. Knocking it down. Wildcats got it going early. Western played some solid defense last year. You see fourth in the Big Ten in total steals. We're not even halfway through the first half, and they already have four. Yeah, I think it's paying attention to detail and understanding your personnel. 
We see here Martinelli getting the, on the floor, setting the tone. But what they've done a really good job is Keith Higgins and Tyler Whitney, Sydney, and Whitlock and all their guards really want to drive and get downhill, especially in transition. So they have really plugged those holes and not allowed those guys. I think if you're Lehigh, you want to maybe be a little bit more opt opportunistic on looking for some three-point opportunities. Meanwhile, Nick Martinelli has been the man tonight. Spin moves inside, little pull-ups. Can't connect right there. But really, I'm sure he misses Brooks Bornheiser. All-conference player. They're waiting for him to come back from a foot injury. But this offense inside is really his in his absence. Yeah, I mean, they're going to play through him. It's almost like you're playing through a center. But you had that mismatch, especially against a Lehigh team that's a little bit undersized. This is called inside. You stay right here. Lehigh having a hard time hanging on from all train. Also having a hard time making shots. We only have three field goals right now to go along with those five turnovers. Yeah, I think we've got to slow down the tempo a little bit. Understand that that's not working right now, playing at that higher pace. Get into some offense and see if you can free up some of your main guys, especially Keith Higgins, to get him going. Tyler Whitney, Sydney, he wears number 22, really the only one offensively who's provided any spark, and he's not in the game right now. Cam Gillis, the sophomore, solid freshman, solid freshman season as the point guard back for year two. Had 30 points in the Patriot League semifinal last year to carry them into the final. Three seconds to shoot, nowhere near, and the rebound to Mullins. Chris Collins told me yesterday, keep an eye on our assist to make field goal range. We're not a one-on-one -on -one team. They already have six assists to go along with the eight-made field goal, so pretty solid in that area. Another one with a chance right there. Nicholson couldn't convert. Lehigh needs someone to get this offense going. Josh Ingram draws the foul right there. I feel like the spacing is a little bit disoriented right now. Lehigh is getting into the painted area, but they're not finding guys for kicks. And Northwestern is really collapsing that defense with the heavy help side. So you got to find ways to get in there and get into the painted area and kick out for the open threes. You called their tournament games last year in the Patriot League tournament game. Uh, they won two, made it all the way to the tournament final. What would you call their strength there? They get inside to Alvey, and he can't find a true freshman back in his home state. They were best at one a year ago. Well, I think it was guard play, obviously, and I think this is a resilient bunch. I mean, the game that I called, the semifinal game, they were down 20 points at Boston University, their two seed, came back and won that game in overtime. So even though this early lead is going for Northwestern, and you see Martinelli with the little flipper again, be on the lookout for Lehigh to be resilient and to keep battling. They do not have any kind of response for Nick Martinelli so far. They miss another three, and they're not getting any kind of offensive blast. We talked about this the last week and how talented they are with the guards, but not a lot of strength and size inside, and we're seeing it on the glass. Yeah, and that's where they, they're missing, you know, two veteran players. You know, maybe something that you can get the ball into, but right now, you know, with Alvin being a freshman, he's more of a pick and pop guy. Shot a ton of threes in high school, so it's definitely something that they're going to have to figure out going into the later half of this second half, first half. Martinelli checks out, only player in this game so far in double figures. He has 10 points. Jalen Leach from Fairfield, the true freshman KJ Windham. Well, wouldn't it be nice for Chris Collins if he could play with that kind of confidence in November and December? And what's going to make him a special player is how quickly he's able to get his shot off. He is comfortable shooting it at the Big Ten level speed. Double team there inside. There's an open three. They just can't find it from distance. Chris Collins said he liked about the man with the ball. Windham, ball handling and scoring. And an assist! Jalen Leach. Pretty shot there, and he'll have a chance to make it three. And you mentioned it, Paul. It looks like they're being a little bit more opportunistic to run in transition. Leach doing a good job of sprinting the lane. Wyndham making the simple play, getting it to his playmaker, and what a finish there by Jalen Leach. A big part of Chris Collins' season right here coming off of those back-to-back -back tournament appearances, and if it goes the way he wants, can Jalen Leach make that leap from the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference to the Big Ten, and how easy does it make him?
Well, when you have that kind of size, he's six four, and he can score at all three levels. He can get to the baskets. We saw in that last one. He can make the three, and he has a really good mid-range game. Whitney Sydney has been all the offense they've had, and they have been one and done on the offensive side. And that's where Matt is just so good. He's able to come in and help on those drives, give a little bit of a contest, but not allow the dump off. Northwestern on a nine to nothing run, shooting it lights out. They made six of their last takes. Would have been good from three. And a rare defensive stop for the Mountain Hawks. Dan Gillis. Back up top to Ingram. Good move to get to the paint. And they shoot two. That's just good offense there. Playing off of two feet by Ingram, attacking Matt Nicholson. Tyler Whitney, Sydney, take a look at what he has done tonight. The rest of the team hasn't scored. That's amazing. At this point, 8.23 left in the first half. Whitney, Sydney, seven. Big reason why his team is trailing by 20. So Keith Higgins, who wears number 13, he's also a career 1,000-point scorer. Injuries last year, but two years ago, he was first-team all-conference. He's among the Mountain Hawks who haven't scored as he is on the bench. There's the first point for someone not named Tyler Whitney Sydney. Free throw from Ingram. And Keith Higgins, before the injury last year where he missed nine games, he was averaging 18 points per game, only averaged about nine points per game to finish off the year. So still kind of finding his footing, but a guy that definitely can get him, put him up and get it, get it done on the offensive end. Northwestern continuing to shoot over 50% here. And a lot of good looks inside from Martinelli. Quick kick outside. That's a true freshman. They're over to Leach. Wide open three. He takes care of it. See Coach Reed trying to switch it up a little bit. Playing zone. Jalen Leach did a good job of stepping in, being confident and assertive, and knocking down that tray ball from the top of the key. Northwestern stays in the man-to-man. -man. Been working out awfully well so far. Higgins wanted a foul there. And a rebound to the true freshman from Chicago land, Angelo Sheravino. Talked to Coach Collins yesterday, said I'd like to get him minutes. I like his game, and I got a lot of upperclassmen in front of him, too. And we saw it in practice. He has a ton of talent. Put the ball on the floor. Coach Collins said one of the best athletes he's had since Vic Law. Lehigh switching back to his own after a lot of man-to-man. -man. Jalen Leach here knocking down the tray ball, a three-level score. Lehigh tried to go to zone, didn't work in that possession. Taking on Northwestern, it's not going well so far. Game one, a lot of time to improve. Preseason media poll here, Trey, they're picked fifth, barely in the top half. Would you have them higher, lower? I think I'd have them higher, especially the fact that they return 69% of their scoring. I mean, they have a lot of guys who can put the ball in the hole. Haven't seen it yet here tonight, though. Yeah, everybody not named Tyler Whitney Sydney, and there he is. 0 for 11, minus number 22 right there, who has seven points. Got Northwestern shooting the lights out, getting a lot of good looks inside. It's not like they're knocking down a lot of tough shots with hands in their face. Like that one right there. Martinelli already has 12. And that's automatic. When he catches the ball, and that's what makes him so unique. When he catches the ball at the Big Ten logo, he is automatic from there. Northwestern on a 14 to 1 run. Wildcats won 9 out of 10 conference games in this building here a year ago. Off to a good start here. Higgins gets one to drop. Good job by Higgins getting into the teeth of the defense, taking his time, shooting over the top of the defender. Another guy that's a three-level scorer that needs to get going. Martinelli with the ball right now. And those 12 points, he's made five out of six shots. Leach, first season as a Wildcat. He's made one of those. Good hunger. Good hustle from hunger. Sheravino, first bucket in his career. It's all working for Northwestern offense, defense, 
freshmen, seniors, all getting it done. Already they lead by 24. One of the many reasons Northwestern made the tournament last year, they shot the ball very well from deep. Top 10 of the nation, actually second in the Big Ten with the three ball, just inside of 40%. And tonight, they are off to a terrific start that way. Had been making over half of them for a while. Now they've slipped a little bit below 50%, but those four makes, Trey, look especially good when their opponents are 0 for 6. Yeah, and that was one of the big questions coming into this season, too, because... As you mentioned, 40% from three a season ago, and they made eight threes per game, which was seventh in the country. But five of those threes for, were from Boo Booey and Ryan Langborg. So where was that production going to come at this year? And we've seen so far, Lehigh is going underneath a lot of stuff, almost giving dare shots to Jalen Leach and KJ Windham, and they've been able to make them pay. Just saw Nick Martinelli. It's almost like he heard you at the open there. Said he's a guy that's going to take the take the spotlight without Barnheiser. He's only missed one shot. Enjoying double figure evening to get his season started. Higgins just made his first bucket last time down court. Up top to Gillis. No offensive rebounds. That theme continues. Northwestern likes to run a deliberate offense, not just tonight to get started, but that's that's kind of what they do. Yeah, I mean, they're one of the slowest-paced teams in the country. I don't think that will change, even with the departure of Boo He's feeling it from deep. Made one of those early. Good tip out back to Martinelli. And that was the freshman, Sheravino. Top three player in the state of Illinois. Coming out of high school last year, foul against Gillis on Leach. Now to imagine, as the year evolves, that they'll probably throw Jalen Leach down there in the post, too. And I think that's one of the advantages that Northwestern has. Even as they go into Big Ten play, they have guys on certain lineups that are all 6'4 and above. So when you play against smaller guards, you can put one of your bigger guards on there and try to get a bucket down low. K.J. Windham, nowhere near. Offensive rebound. Good look back inside to Windham. Leach with a pretty assist. And Leach is placed with such a calm pace. You could tell he's a veteran. He got that offensive rebound, took a look, saw K.J. Windham come to the basket, made the pass, and K.J. delivered. Lehigh moving it around quickly, but just having a hard time getting those open looks. Higgins, in and out, still haven't made a three. All right, Northwestern doing a lot of things well so far since they have the ball on offense. What do you like best offensively that you've seen so far? I think, as you said, it's just the deliberate pace that they're playing with. They're getting into the flow of their offense really well. They're kind of getting any shot as we see. Woo! Luke Hunger with the step back. The Northwestern has a pair of bigs that play. Luke Hunger 6'10". Nicholson is 7 feet. Colin summed him up yesterday in the difference. He said Nicholson's terrific on defense. Hunger much more offensive-minded. And we've seen that here tonight. Ball will stay with Lehigh. And there's no hesitation in this game, too. It's almost like you would think that he was an all-league guy the way that he's coming out so far. I mean, a step back into a midi right there, that is a tough shot for a post player to hit. So that's a good sign for Northwestern because in certain games, especially in this non-con, as Brooks works himself back to getting healthy, that's somewhere that you can throw it into and potentially get some easy buckets. Potentially an advantage for Northwestern moving into the Big Ten season that they have a pair of veterans, Hunger at 6'10", Nicholson at 7 feet, especially with the way they like to run that slow down offense. Brooks Barnheiser on the bench, leading rebounder a year ago, in the top returning score. They do expect him back here sometime in November, right now nursing a foot injury. There are two freshmen on the court right now to go along with the veterans for Chris Collins. There's the other big guy we were talking about, the seven-footer Nicholson. Tried to free up Martinelli, and they just haven't been able to stop him inside. It just looks like he's practicing down there in the lane. It's that old-school YMCA game. 
They go underneath the pick and roll. He's still able to take his time, kind of hesitate a little bit and get that little flip shot. Gillis and back to Martinelli right now. Martinelli has 14 points. The Mountain Hawks total have 11. Wyndham can't get the bounce. And here comes Tyler Whitney, Sydney, the only offensive threat they've had so far. And they'll go back to the line. For Northwestern already with 40 points. They've only given up 11. An opening night going exactly the way Chris Collins had hopes. Ahmed, you're having a good night as usual, but I'm going to say Nick Martinelli is having the best night of all of us. Look at what he's doing, and then you line it up to Lehigh. Has more points than them, shooting a much higher percentage. And that's how you get your season started, number two. Yeah, just getting it done in all facets of the game. He's been a really good defender as well. I mean, doing a good job. Garden, Keith Higgins, spent a little bit of time on Tyler Whitney Sydney when Ty Berry's been out of the game. Just... Marvelous first half from the junior forward. Whitney Sidney on the other side has been their best player just like he was a year ago. Steady build for him impressively in his career there for the Mountain Hawks. Started out all rookie team in the conference. Sophomore year, third team all conference. All the way up to first team last year. Try a little full court press. They haven't really done much to get in the way and slow down the Western game. Started out a lot of man-to-man, -man, tried some zone as well. I would like to see a little bit more ball pressure from Lehigh. Just challenge K.J. Windham a little bit, Jalen Leach, and see what they do with that ball pressure. Looking to double-team Martinelli. Good moving out to Sheravino. Martinelli three. Having a night. Just how much more fluid that jump shot has, has become. Kind of had a hitch in it early in his career and has really worked on it in his time here at Evanston. See if they get a single three to fall. Still hasn't happened. Missed threes. No offensive opportunities after that. Been a big-time theme and the factor will go in the way of Northwestern tonight. Cheravino has a two, and that's his first three. Great job with Sheriffino coming off that thing hard. A little bit of a miss the communication from Lehigh and that floppy action comes off confidently and knocks down the three ball. First team all city out of Mount Carmel High School in Chicago. Enjoying his first night here with the Wildcats. Kicks it to the corner. Freshman to freshman for three. Northwestern now, since we're in football season, they've had seven touchdowns, 49 points to the 12, and the three ball is working tonight. I mean, how about 15 assists on 20 made field goals? And it starts with actions like this. K.J. Windham setting it up, the little floppy action for Angelo to come off, and then in transition, returning the favor, able to find K.J. in the corner seeing why they're so high on this freshman class. Coming back to what Chris Collins talked about with us yesterday after practice about his offense, he said, we're going to look different without Boo Booey. Going to feature a lot more ball movement, and I need to see a lot of assists for made field goals, and it's playing out just like he talked about yesterday. It also seems like nobody really cares who scores. Right? There's an unselfishness about this team, and everybody understands their role. They understand right now they're going to play through Nick Martinelli, the other guys can be opportunistic when the opportunities come. Northwestern nine points inside the last minutes. Lehigh 12 total for the night. Had a hard time getting that one off. We'll have a chance to make it three. Nasir Whitlock. 
Good job from Whitlock here, being patient. Came off the pick and roll, didn't have anything initially, and then re-attacks into the middle. There's no help side, and able to get the floater over the top. Whitlock grew up in traditional Midwestern Big Ten country in Minneapolis. He gets that one to go, sophomore. More full court press. But basically, Northwestern has been unabated down the court most of the time. There's been their leading scorer, Nick Martinelli. Love the way Chris Collins described him yesterday. Funky and unconventional. Gervino, true freshman. Thought about stepping that one down. Didn't quite get there. You love to see that from Serafino coming off of those down screens, aggressive and looking to score. We see it again. Nice left hand drive. Maybe got hit there, a little bit of contact, but an athletic play for sure. He hit a shot yesterday in practice. It was basically a floater from about 12 feet that really isn't a good shot. I was waiting for Chris Collins. Hung her all the way in. He's had a nice start in this first half. I was waiting for Collins to get on him, but he didn't say anything, which told me this kid's got some game if the coach is okay with that shot. Yeah, he's oozing with talent. And once again, it's the athleticism, and he has good control and balance for a player his size as a freshman. Inside a minute now, as the score would tell you, first half that has been nothing but Wildcats. Shot clock down to seven. They have really struggled with that three ball. They kick it out to Hunger. Northwestern happy to slow it down. That's what's been working for them. Martinelli has led the way already with 17 points. Hunger also in double figures with 11. Martinelli with the glass. He thought he was fouled. No call. Big time score in high school from Chicago Land. 24 points per game as a senior. Has been working his way up. More points each year he's been on campus. Five seconds left in the half. Whitlock blocks. One final three attempt. Fitting way for this one to end for Lehigh. 0 for 12 from distance in the first half. Chris Collins' side, freshman, got better as a sophomore, but he's got that grit and that toughness. He said, that's the kind of kid we want. And just because we're going to NCAA tournaments now, our recruiting philosophy is not going to change. Yeah, and all these guys have a chip on their shoulder. I mean, they were picked 16th in the preseason. Ryan Langford won you all those games. You guys got to prove wrong. All right, Brett Reed, if you're the head coach of the Mountain Hawks at halftime, forget about the score. What's your message there at the break to come out in the third quarter as they turn it over once again? Wyndham back to Barry. Barry's a three. That's a great sign for Ty. Only played six minutes in that first half. And for him to see the ball go in, it's going to take him some time to kind of get his rhythm back. His 300th career field goal. What did they miss last year when he missed those final 11 games? Just somebody who can space the floor. It opens up the floor for everybody. For a guy like that, it's just his presence. Because you always have to be accountable for him. And it opens up more driving lanes. Higgins, he has been off. One of the very best players. A thousand point score. Having a hard time finding his range tonight. Jalen Leach, where's number one? The transfer. All-conference guard at Fairfield University last year. Calm job of running the show. Barry lost it. A rare turnover in that first half. The Wildcats had 15 assists to only two turnovers. Good backdoor cut. Hey, hey, the true freshman back in his home state, Hank Alvey, with two. And he told me he had 40 to 50 friends and family here. They've been waiting for that puck. Yeah, good cut in transition. Good job of using the other side of the basket as Matt Nicholson was coming over to pin it. Jalen Leach misses. So Hank Alvey talked to him here at his shoot around, all smiles. When I asked him how many friends and family he had coming, I thought he might say 10, 12, you know, maybe 20. He said 40. He goes, it might be 50. I said, who's getting all those tickets? He said, that, that's my parents' responsibility. But he was super excited for this opportunity from about three hours away near Peoria. He said the schedule came out around June. He was so excited to come back for his very first college game back to his home state. We leave him open, and he can do that. It's been impressive that he hasn't four shots either tonight in his first game as a Wildcat. Yeah, just his pace. And he kind of just lets the game come in. He's not going to force anything. not going to try to break you down one-on-one. -on -one. Whitney Sidney had seven points early. The 
first seven points for Lehigh. Couldn't convert there, and there's Leach. More control there, more patience. Martinelli already with 17 points. Only his third miss tonight. They push it up to Higgins. And even the easy twos. Not falling for the Mountain Hawks tonight. Yeah, sometimes it's a score kind of get in your head a little bit. And when you get those easy opportunities in transition, you know, just a rough night overall for Higgins so far. He's one for six. Meanwhile, Wyndham had a couple of those in the first half. And Martinelli working his way to 20 points. He'll go to the line. He's got 17 already. He just has such a knack of finding the ball. Even when he played with Boo Booey last year, he would kind of sneak into those open play areas a little bit on the baseline and who would find them and now as he's starting to merge as one of the primary pieces it's still the same kind of shots that he's able to get up but now it's just him operating with them playing through him injuries last year led to martinelli starting the final 11 games when he averaged 11 points Talked to chris collins yesterday and one of the many points he made he's like okay we're disappointed brooks barnheiser won't play but He's a security blanket for all of us, and so other players are going to get to, they're going to have to step up that wouldn't if Brooks was out there, and I think he's getting a real good look at what Martinelli's about tonight. Wildcats been in that man-to-man -man most of the night and winning that way. Whitney Sidney, he has been their one guy knocking down shots. He gets him a little bit closer to 20. I think that's one of those ones. you got to understand that Tyler Whitney Sidney, they've done a good job with him all night. You might want to go over the top of that screen because if he, you go over the top, he's able to curl it and get downhill. Now called inside against Cam Gillis. Brooks Barnheiser, I mentioned at the top of the broadcast that he is getting close to coming back. I saw him running yesterday at practice. And he is, he is nearing his first appearance of the season, but he has that foot injury. And not quite ready, but he is getting close as the shots of him in practice would indicate. At some point here in November, he'll be out here with his teammates. I'll call it inside against Martinelli. So he was so much fun to watch last year. Kind of like Martinelli in the sense that you can't really label him with just one position. Yeah. Is he a two? Is he a three? Is he a four? I mean, he really offensively played one through five. I mean, they would play a lot of ball screen actions where he's the screener or he's the ball handler. And he could also play in the short corner where you're able to find him. He, I mean, he's a guy that is so versatile, probably one of the most versatile players in the Big Ten. But well, that's the second time Leach has just pulled up and knocked down a smooth jumper. He's going to play some point guard. Do you think that Barnheiser will play some point guard in that as they look to, to recover from the loss of Boo Boo? Absolutely, and just because of the way that they play, they play kind of with those Princeton concepts where they bring two guards up the court. He's going to be one of the guys, you see Leach getting into the passing lane, that's able to be a pressure relief and bring the ball and kind of get them into their offense if there are other teams that have quicker guards that are going to pressure the point guards. Leach has 10 points tonight, and thinking about 10 in scoring, you know, two years ago, his junior season there, he only averaged six points yeah. in Fairfield. He jumped it up by 10. To average 16 this last year when he was named first team all conference that's not an easy thing to do because usually you kind of get put in a box especially at that mid-major level and credit to him for having a all-league type of season shot clock inside of one they just got that one off and that is their first three of the night they had missed their previous 12. that exhale comes from the mountain hawk side of the bench it's got to feel good when you feel it as a player when you haven't hit a three all night Martinelli approaching 20 points here and his foul before he got to the basket. He's got 18. Look at Northwestern already with 15 or 59 points up by 37. Just getting the second half started here in Evanston.
injury before the 76ers won that title. So Chris told us yesterday he never got the ultimate as a player, as a coach. Now he gets the ultimate recognition. And, of course, his parents were all proud of our kids. But it was fun to watch Chris talk about how proud he is of his dad. Yeah, truly one of the legends of basketball, one of the voices as a broadcaster, as a player, as a coach, somebody who's loved. Leach to hunger for two more. And, and just the fact, like, how interpersonal he was. I mean, he used to call us. You know, he was so engaged and so enthusiastic about the program and just giving us advice. We used to call him Papa Doug. We would all just kind of sit around like kindergartners and just listen to his Michael Jordan stories. And so somebody that I still keep in touch with today. So we love you, Papa Doug, if you're watching. He said the first time he called you, like, you didn't really know him. He just started talking. You're like, I, I, I think this is Doug Collins. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was right away. He understood in the beginning of the Chris Collins era that he had to get guys locked in and so he wanted to show us from the beginning that he was going to be engaged into this program and that he wanted us to be all in luke hunger has been offensive minded tonight chris told us of his bigs he was the one who would go get the most points but he's already in double figures higgins up top to alvi out to gillis they just made one but now there's still one out of 14 from distance Jalen Leach getting his first taste here as a Wildcat. Four years at Fairfield. Be one of those guards filling the shoes of Boo Booey. In and out, he's already hit two of those in this second half. I think if you're Luke Hunter there, you want to set a screen for Jalen Leach because Alvy's playing so far back in two previous possessions where he knocked it down. And we see Martinelli get the steal. He was able to knock down the mid-range shot. And that puts him over 20 points tonight. Owens with a board, and that's someone who contributed a little bit last year, but his minutes are going to go way up this season. Yeah, someone they've been really pleased with in the offseason. Somebody who's going to provide energy, and I think a guy that could be a lockdown defender on opposing teams' best player in the Big Ten. Martinelli made two out of two threes. He thought about that one, had it knocked away, and he'll go back to the line. And right now it's a question of how many points will number two have when this night is over? Let's check right now. Yep, 20 points. He's made 8 out of 11 shots. And honestly, Paul, it's going to be like the ugliest 20 to 30 points that you'll see. And a player that he really reminds me of is Antoine Jameson. And somebody that I watched growing up in the Bay Area when he played for the Golden State Warriors. Kind of had that awkward game. Couldn't really. He's not going to beat you with his speed. He's not incredibly strong. But somebody that understands angles can kind of get those flip shots and a solid outside shooter. Some guys are just scores, even though it doesn't look conventional. Again, Chris said he was unconventional and funky, knocks them both down there. But over 23 points in Chicago land at Glenbrook South, one of the suburbs here in Chicago. He'll take a rest. And the guy who just has a nice feel around the basket. Yeah, and just one of those guys that's a chip on their shoulder we talked about earlier. Nobody recruited him. You know, played for Mean Streets. You get a little bit of a hand check from Blake Smith. A local AU team out in Chicago then started to get some notoriety in the AU landscape, but never really kind of solidified himself as a power five forward. But clearly showing now that a lot of teams are probably going to regret not recruiting him. You can look inside, and Higgins will go to the line before he knocks one of these down here. Trey got to get this in. Sometimes you get a stat, but just like first game of the season, I don't think I'll get this one again. We're not going to be at 13 minutes left in the second half. <laughs> And I can say that an individual, Martinelli, has the same amount of points as the other team. 22 yeah. and 22. Yeah, you don't see, you see that maybe like in a high school game. But in a Division I college basketball game, very, very rare. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that to be the norm as we get to the last 13 minutes of this game. Higgins, 84% free throw shooter each of the last couple of years having a night that he's going to want to forget about but he'll have a big season that's an all-conference yep. player missed time because of an injury last year and he'll step up big for the mountain hawks as the season gets long yeah still finding his footing you know anytime you come back from an injury still take some time as we see luke throw it away but 
somebody that, you know, as we mentioned, averaged 18 points per game before the injury season ago, can score at all three levels, has good size. And so it's going to take maybe some of those misses to work out the kinks and develop that rhythm offensively. Blake Smith guarding the ball right now. He's dropped off and wearing number 43, the walk-on. Whitney Sidney has been tough to guard. He's drawn a number of fouls here tonight. But Blake Smith, number 43, a walk-on who really earned a lot of minutes and respect with the way he played last year. What kind of role does he play in this rotation, and does he have one once they get into conference games? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do between him and Mullins at that backup wing position. But they don't make the NCAA tournament last year without Blake Smith. I mean, a guy who played two minutes in the first 20 or so games of the season, and then all of a sudden he's thrusted into the rotation and does a great job just understanding his role, being a lockdown defender, a team guy, and somebody that they can rely upon to put into the game in spot minutes. Cervino having a game here in his first time as a Wildcat. Turned that one over. Scored in the first half, also had four assists. And that's a nice take in, but again, they can't quite finish. And Mullins kicks it back out to Wyndham. Good to see both of the true freshmen on the court right now. And Wyndham and Sheravino is what looked like Collins one at the time. Now, there it is. Chris Collins coaching like it's 65 to 63. We know it's 65 to 23, though. <laughs> Back to Evanston after this. Season. He's seen a little bit of a drop off on both ends, so he got after him a little bit. Sheravino. That's his fifth assist, and Luke Hunger has been the top scorer right behind Martinelli tonight. Now I asked you at the top of the broadcast, actually in the pregame show, we we're talking to Ahmed and the guys, and first tee up to you was, okay, they've been to back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. It's a program that's been fighting for relevance for so long. You see any changes in your former head coach, Whitney Sidney, good kick inside, Alvi. Illinois State product here with his second basket tonight, and you said he hasn't changed a single bit. And that exchange right there in the timeout was the best example again. And he he had mentioned at media day how excited the fact that he was picked that they were picked preseason 16. Say that again. Preseason 16. After being in the top three for the two previous seasons, I understand Boo is a great player, but there is a culture. There is. A great home court environment here. This is one of the toughest places to play, so I, I kind of didn't understand that, to be honest. Something you haven't been able to say for a long time. A tough place to play. Won 9 out of 10 Big Ten games last year. We're back after this. Do some learning. Okay, yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, yeah. I went on that trip my senior year. We went to Spain. I mean, it's it's a great bonding opportunity, especially with some of the new pieces, the freshmen, Jalen Lee's coming in. Like, just to be able to get to know your teammates on a personal level, to see the world, it just grows you closer overall. It's hard to say if the bigger benefit is on the courts or in developing right. those relationships and becoming close with the guys. I would say probably off the court, which obviously translates to chemistry on the floor. Another thing is these guys have been together now for about five months. You know, it's kind of been straight through the summer to that trip, had a couple of weeks off, and then you're right back in the fall practices. And one of the interesting things about getting to know these rosters the last couple of weeks, uh, they have something old school here. That's a nice kick inside and a good finish. Shelby now has three buckets. Whitney Sidney like that assist. They have continuity. Yeah. They have players that come in as freshmen and stay through their senior year, both of them. Yeah, and the landscape of college basketball where you see a lot of teams overhaul their roster, Coach Collins said that's not going to be our formula. Barnelli draws another foul, but 
they are going to be able to get guys to come in as freshmen, grow, develop, and learn. They understand here, too, they're going to get an opportunity to play. I mean, Sheriff Vino and Wyndham have played well here. But they both got an opportunity where maybe at other places you don't get those opportunities. So they've been able to get some higher recruits as well. Martinelli has been the player to most take advantage of the absence of, of Bornheiser here tonight, who will be back at some point here in the month of November with that foot injury. Can you see a scenario where it's kind of like 1 and 1A one as the top two scores, Or when Brooks comes back, there he is, is he clearly the guy? Yeah, that's an I mean, Martinelli's playing so well right now. So I think it is going to be a little bit of a 1A, 1B type of situation. But they're so similar in the fact that they're kind of post-up forwards that you can run a lot of similar actions on the offensive end. So it's not going to change stylistically how they play. Whitney Sydney lost that one. One of the many issues they have had tonight is turnovers. And they're happy to show all kinds of patience now with that kind of cushion. You approach the halfway point, but that's a pretty look inside. Mullins with the finish. That's all set up by Ty Berry coming off of that action. Both guys went to Berry on that screen, and that freed up Mullins. I was an assist to turnover ratio in the first game of the season of 19 to 5. That's a freshman right there. Good look. So here's the trip for the and Chris Collins continues to coach here on his side with that kind of cushion. On the other side, we find Brett Reed. It's not just about this game here on this trip or this trip away from home. They drove the hour south to Philadelphia yesterday, flew in. They shot around here for the very first time, and they're not going home tomorrow. They're going to D.C. to take on Georgetown on the following night. So this is a package deal, and as he told us here today, it's really all about these kind of trips playing up in the conferences, about getting ready for the conference, which starts for them in early January. And look at that, also a trip to UCLA. So taking their lumps tonight. We'll see how the rest of the games go. But his top priority now in his 18th season, and again, the all-time winningest coach at that school, get them ready for what's coming in January. Yeah, that's why these next 10 minutes are so important because you want to develop those habits try to get a flow offensively and I think if you're Coach Reed you're trying to tell your guys let's win these last 10 minutes of the game and you and I have both been on the other side the wrong side of games like this and it's a good scoop inside but in the turnover you can kind of push the score aside yep. if, like you said if you do finish strong you at least get on the bus you get on the plane with something that felt good the last time you stepped off the court yeah, and I think the same thing goes for Northwestern as well. I mean, you want to finish this game off. I mean, they have a date with Dayton. Martinelli, again, just unstoppable down there in the low block. Probably want to send a double team at some point here, but... I was, I was calling for those early in yeah, the first right. half, too. Yeah. I, I just don't think it's wise at this point to leave Knozman on an island there. I mean, it's we like to say it's barbecue chicken. And it's been barbecue chicken all night on that grill. Whatever you call it, it's 26 points. He's only missed three shots, and he's a rebound away from having a double-double. You see the career high coming up as well. Almost has as many points as the opponent tonight. Incredible. Look inside, and they've missed a number of those shots tonight. Just two from point blank range and a little point forward here for Martinelli. His next basket will give him a career high. Barry, just like Leach, they've been knocking down those, those little mid-range pull-ups here in the second half. How about that recognition of Martinelli? Understands he's got to get Ty Barry going. Dribbles right at his defender. They don't switch. He's able to knock down the midi. Little pull-up there to Sear Whitlock. Sophomore with the bucket. Final nine minutes now of this game. Martinelli, 26 points, and he does have that 10th rebound. Second time in his career that the junior has had a double-double. Barry. In and out. Mullins with a nice hustle play. Whitlock comes away with it. Oh, Lehigh going to, D going to be in D.C. Gillis with a three. And the whistle there called against Nicholson. Going to be in D.C. on election day. Yeah, I mean... That will be an interesting trip. I, I don't know what that's going to be like, but 
Hey, I mean, college basketball continues. Big seven-footer Chris Collins saying yesterday he's an elite defender. You pair him up with 6'10 Luke Hunger, who's been in double figures most of this night. Some imposing figures inside for the Wildcats. Jalen Leach coming back in. Nicholson checking out. Martinelli checking out with that double-double. Wonderful to see him again at that time. I think there's three chicken sandwiches on the line, potentially. <laughs> How's that? What's that? Just for chicken sandwiches? Yeah. I mean, shoot, I'll pick one up after the game. So Jalen Leach had, had one start in his first two years, which, which is amazing to think about a guy who just left Fairfield University as an all-conference player and looking like he's going to fit in here in the Big Ten. Fitzmorris just checked in, talking about imposing figures inside. The seven-footer by way of Stanford and Stony Brook getting his first minutes. Whitlock knocks it down again, and I, I get the feeling that Fitzmorris might have a future getting some minutes because Chris Collins spent a yeah. lot of time coaching him yesterday. Yeah, I mean, they're going to need everybody, and in the Big Ten, you need bodies because there's so many good bigs in this conference, so there's going to be some foul troubles in certain games, so you're going to need to throw in that third big. Average double figures last winter at Stony Brook. Someone's got to shoot it. Said, I'll take it. Lehigh in the first half, 15 points. Second half, already better with 17. You can do that when you're seven feet. Made it look easy. That'll be a foul called against Barry. Just over seven minutes left. Speaking of sevens, Northwestern has 77 points. Giant lead in the home opener. I know Italy is known for pasta, but with Nick Nardinelli tonight, it has been all barbecue chicken. He has been cooking on a different level. And he's been making open three-pointers too, but he is at his way in the painted area, being able to move and operate down there, get some of those awkward flip shots off, having a tremendous night. We've been tracking his night this way, and right now he's six points behind Lehigh, and I think he's going to finish quite a few points behind because he's taking a rest for good after 26 points. 10 rebounds, only missing three shots. No foul inside. And Northwestern going to start to clear their bench here a little bit. Jalen Leach, starter, he's out there now. Sheravino, true freshman with the ball. Blake Barkley is in for the first time. He wears number four. Foul called against Fitzmorris. It's one of those ones that's a little bit of a freshman mistake by Sheravino. Went a little bit too quick on the ball screens. Nine out of ten times. When there's a moving screen on the big, it's because the guard goes a little bit too quick. Chris Collins telling us yesterday this team is going to have to be unselfish. We're not built to go one-on-one. -on -one. Myers go right to assist to turnover. 19 assists and only six turnovers. That's pretty unselfish. You can tell by the body language, too. They celebrate each other's success. Nobody cares who scores as long as they get a high percentage look. Sheridino away from the ball. Call for the foul. A lot of coaching opportunities out there available yep. for the freshmen. He and Wyndham have been out there quite a bit tonight. And I can tell you one thing. There's going to be a lot of film for Wyndham and Sheravino on the defensive end. They've struggled a little bit this second half, keeping the ball in front. That's something that they're going to go over with their two freshmen. The student section here in force tonight. Yeah. Yeah. 
We get it. Leach and Barry still out there. Barry probably doesn't want to come out after missing those 11 games last year with a knee injury. He's only been full speed for about a month. Scrimmage against Lewis last week. His first time he'd really been out there for extended time. Boy, I, I know it is kind of garbage time right now, but Jalen Leach is going to fit right in here this oh, season. Oh, yeah. And that's what he brings. He's a bigger guard, so whenever you put a smaller guard, that's exactly what he can do, which will be so important in Big Ten play. Getting to a spot and shooting over smaller defenders. Look inside, and that is just the net kind of night here for Lehigh. Another turnover. And Leach has just been awfully under control. He acts like it, it's his fifth year here at Northwestern yeah. instead of his first game. And once again, I think that's what like a foreign trip can do is provide that comfortability. And, you know, he's playing a little bit more point, which he didn't do as much at Fairfield. And so that's going to be adjustment at the Big Ten level. But one thing he can clearly do is score that basketball. His shooting went up so much from his junior to senior year. Might have the assist. Yes, he does to Barry. Best catch and shoot on this team. But over 40%, that's what Leach was for the very first time in his career last year. And he's picked right up from there here tonight. And there's a bucket inside for Lehigh. Ben has been flirting with baskets around there tonight, but having a hard time getting them to go down until then. Fitzmorris. And Wah, another chance here now. Trying to make it back to back in the rebound. First time he gets his hand on ball for, for the Wildcats. Blake Barkley. Maybe a first basket. Back out to Leach. Wants to use a pick from Fitzmorris. Goes the other way. Get a timeout call over by Northwestern. Yep. Chris Collins continuing the messaging. It's off. Flying start here for Northwestern. Just dominating from start almost to finish here. Already up 82 to 34. Season opener for both sides. Ty Berry with two more. And this is important minutes for Ty Berry to develop some rhythm. Because in their next game, I mean, they're going to rely upon him more and his better impressions going up against Dayton. Getting extra minutes out here, even though they're up by 50, just because he didn't get him much last year. Higgins pulls up, knocks down at two. Knee surgery and came back as the summer got longer. Just knocking that rust off here tonight. Sheravino. Back on the other side. He had a nice first half. Good spin move there. And he'll get to the line. I'm going to be curious to see whether I'm courtside calling their games or not. When I check out Northwestern, is 44 out there in the regular rotation here as the season goes on? I think so because what he provides outside of scoring. You can see the talent oozing, right? His ability to put the ball on the floor. He knocked down a three in the first half. But I think what he brings from a hustle side and an athleticism side, he's going to be able to be a guy that gets you extra possessions, a guy that's going to be able to guard other players that are more athletic. And if you want to play a little bit of small ball, potentially a guy that you could play on the floor. So I think a guy that's going to be in the rotation in Big Ten play. Ty Barry will take a seat. Chris Gullen, so excited to have him back and healthy. And thinking about that rotation, I mean, you played for him. You yep. were a sophomore when he arrived. How many does he want to play once they really get going with the new kids? Yeah, I think it's, it's usually eight. And so I think the biggest question mark right now is that wing position. They have a lot of depth, so one of those guys is going to fall out of the rotation. But, you know, as you know, with injuries, you just never know. So you always got to stay ready. Mullins, one expected to really up his workload from last year to this. Didn't even average a point last year. And he'll probably be in the consideration to be that eighth guy. First basket of the Knights, Blake Barkley. Now, exhibition, Blake Barkley played a little bit of five as well. So that's another guy that 
If you play small ball, that you could throw in there too. So there's just a lot of versatility for lineup for this Northwestern team. Bell called against Fitzmorris. Student section is fired up every single time oh, yeah. the Hawks make it to the line. I think they're one away, Paul, from I think they have seven of us. Memory serves me right. I think it's eight misses. Gets you the free sandwich. And where does that happen? What's that? Where's that come from? Here? No, Chick-fil-A. All right. From their response, they know very well they're right there. No, no, not that time. Almost. You, you made the comment when we came out here tonight. You hadn't seen a student section like yeah. that for the first game of the season since you've been coming to these games. Never. I mean, as a freshman, to see the energy, the student section packed, everybody on their feet the entire game, truly a changed program. Mm. They're still hungry. <laughs> still time. I even drew some boobs. <laughs> Making that pair of free throws. It's funny, every time Lehigh even goes to the baskets, they're begging for the referees to call foul. Oh, that's a great look! And what a finish by Sherevino! The reason why they say this is the best athlete that they've seen from since Vic Law. Oh, what a finish! Some serious ups there as well. Oh, they wanted the foul, they got it. They're more excited for the fouls than they are for the right? dunk. I don't think I've ever seen a crowd begging for fouls on their home team. At least the students. Yeah, at least the students. But I mean, as a college student, a free chicken sandwich goes a long way. Edward Benoit. There it is. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, college. Huh? College, yep. Yeah. Give a shout out to my son too. He's here. He loves Chick-fil-A sandwiches. So he's going crazy in the in the stands as well. Is he a student here? He is not. He's only four. <laughs> <laughs> is he in the student section? <laughs> no, he's in. he's not. Up way past his bedtime. Oh yeah. Sheravino, after the dunk, almost had the assist. Lehigh looking to finish with some kind of positivity before they get on that plane for D.C. tomorrow. Take on Georgetown on Wednesday night. Good look in to finish there. Jake Pike into the game. His first basket. think that Northwestern's going to make that 100. It looked like they would get there for a while here in the second half. It's Morris spinning. Hey, 52. All right, empty in the bench now. Gus Hurlburt in. Sophomore checking in for the first time. That student section is going to be excited if Big 54 gets a bucket oh, yeah. tonight. Largest margin of victory in the opener since 94 to 43 win against University of Chicago. That came back in November of 1993. Champ for Gus. Inside a minute. Pretty look there. Using the glass. Nasir Whitlock. Had a couple of moments here, one of the few bright spots here for the Mountain Hawks. Now inside a minute, Northwestern coming off back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances. Season opener looking awfully good. Sheravino short on that one. 24 Big Ten Conference wins the last two years, most in any stretch they've had. Knocking down a three there. Arkansas on back-to-back -back trips down the court. That's Peter Kramer, a freshman. You can pick an area tonight. Shooting, they've been over 50%. Three-point shooting, they've been flirting with 50%. Three times the assists and turnovers. 
and cleaning up the guy the, the glass on offense and defense Gonna have to get rid of the ball here or just turn it over shot clock runs out Top of the broadcast, Trey Demps, the former Wildcat, called it the golden era of Northwestern basketball. And season number 12, you wouldn't know it from the look on his face, but went awfully well. The bench shows it. They've got a lot of smiles. They go along with a 90-46 to 46 cushion here to get this season started. Took control early and never relinquished. Wildcats move to 1-0 with an exclamation point. Lehigh will look to put the pieces back together. Before they play in two nights at Georgetown. Chris Collins, Brett Reed with a handshake. Age of North Kiawa by Tere tikada anvani ayna bunata irkida di. Mm-hmm. 